So in this section, we're going to cover herpes. And as you know, we've already covered a few forms of herpes. We covered um, chicken pox, which is varicella zoster, human herpes virus 3. We covered cytomegalovirus, um, which was basically herpes 5. Epstein-Barr virus was herpes 4. So first of all, with herpes, there's two types. And this is the common everyday herpes that people think people know about. Okay, there's two types. There's HSV-1 and there's HSV-2. Okay, and this is, this is the one that's basically known as oral herpes. And we're going to go into this one first. And then this is the one that's the sexually transmitted herpes. Okay, so first we're going to talk about HSV-1. So let's get started on it. And <clears throat> with HSV-1, um, it's transmitted by the oral or respiratory route. Okay, I'm just going to put oral route. Okay, that's the main way it's transmitted. And to be honest with you, 90% of the population, herpes gets a, a stigma for being something that's really dreadful and evil. 90% of the population will have this by the age of 50. Okay, so this is, this is pretty common. And most of the time, it's not even a problem. Um, what's it look like? So usually, um, it's a cold sore. And I think we've all seen people who have cold sores, and no one has ever said, oh my God, you have herpes, and ran away. That's why I'm talking about the stigma with herpes. is always considered to be such a bad, like it's such a dreadful thing. But in actuality, it's just a cold sore. Okay, um, or also known as, or AKA fever blisters. I had a student one time and we were talking about herpes and he kept telling me, I'm never getting herpes, I'm never going to get herpes. And I asked him, I, I go, have you ever had a cold sore? And he goes, no. I go, have you ever had a fever blister? And he goes, yeah. I go, well, you have herpes. And so then he went around to school telling everybody, you ever have a fever blister? <laughs> you, you have herpes. Um, all right, so what are they like? These are painful. A lot of people confuse these with canker sores, which these are not canker sores. And they don't stick around that long. Painful, short-lived lived lesions. Let me put vesicles. You could put lesions. A lot of times it looks like an open sore um, on the lips. On the lips. Usually they got to be by some type of mucous membrane. All right? When it's not active, what it does is it hides basically up behind the ear. So it... Uh, it stays in the trigeminal. And I'll explain this in, in a little bit. The trigeminal, I want to actually draw it. The trigeminal um, ganglion. A ganglion is made up of nerve cell bodies. So I'll, ex I'll explain this in, in a little bit. And this is located behind the ear. And normally what's going to happen is you are going to need some type of stress um, or something like that to actually make this happen. So basically the trigeminal nerve is 
is a communication, N stands for nerve, between the brain and the face. Um, if you've had anatomy or med paths, we talk about this, between, the reason it's called trigeminal is it has three different branches on it. Okay, the sensation to the face. And we'll, we'll come back to this. Okay, like I said, a lot of times this is confused with canker sores. But canker sores are actually something else. I, could, I guess I could put, no, it's not going to be misdiagnosed. But it's um, confused with canker sores. So canker sores are actually something called aphthous ulcers. And those are usually painful, little painful white things that you get inside the mouth. They don't know what causes those. But we do know what causes herpes. Right? We know it's it's a form of uh it's it's a form it's a form of uh herpes. It's a it's a virus. Oh yeah, and just remember this is a viral infection also. Okay, is unknown and canker sores are more likely to appear on movable membranes, such as the mouth. Actually, the only place I know that canker sores actually do occur is the mouth. So like I said, usually something has to activate this. And believe it or not, one of the things that can do it is sunlight. Um, emotional upsets. I'm just going to put this as stress. And hormone changes, of course. Remember, a triangle means changes. So there's also different types of HSV-1. But before we do that, let's, let's, let's take a look. So let's say you have someone's face, and remember, I can't draw. So here's their eyes, here's their nose, here's their mouth, there's their neck. And if you know me, this is actually a pretty decent drawing. Okay, and so here is your ear. And this is going to be your trigeminal um, plexus or ganglion. And then you have nerves that come down to do sensation. So what will happen is the herpes will actually stay in here until something upsets it. And then it's going to come out and it's going to affect the mouth somewhere. If you notice, usually people get the, the uh, herpes on the lower, on the lower lip. Okay, so this is where my trigeminal ganglion would be. And like I said, it's made up of nerve cell bodies. So if you've ever seen a picture of a nerve, it kind of looks like this, and then it has an axe on there. You know, a nerve kind of looks like this. This is the cell body right here. So this part is going to be all right in here. The ganglion, right? Because the ganglion is made up of cell bodies, and it hides there because it can avoid the uh, it can avoid white blood cells, just like we saw with chickenpox hiding in the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, and there's a few different types. You can get this from wrestling. It's called herpetic.
gladiatorium. Okay, and this is uh, when someone gets HSV1 from wrestling. Okay, and then that wrestling's one word, by the way. I should stretch this out there. And then um, there's also something called Herpetic Whitlow. This is when someone gets herpes who works around the mouth. So it's usually infections on the finger. from touching an infected person. Okay, and usually um, the herpetic whitlow is usually found On nurses and dentists and physicians. Okay, so that is the end of HSV one. I'll go into HSV two on the next video. Okay, and this is just a um, picture of what herpes looks like. This is actually from your textbook here. So that's just an example. But like I said, most of the time people will see this on their, um, more as a cut on the lips. And this is also from your book. That gives you an example of the trigeminal nerve. You can see it's, there's three branches to it and how it comes and goes down to the face. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I mean to the lips. So the virus will actually stay up in here when it's not active and then come down to the mouth like I explained a few minutes ago.